C, B, G. Hello, this is Marie Hornback coming to you live from Atlanta. mother of four children and I have seven grandchildren. I am a teacher of cursive handwriting at an elementary school in Fort Collins, Colorado. I teach grades three through six. Um, they begin American cursive handwriting in grade three. I also do work with the junior high and high school students as well. If their handwriting is uh, maybe deteriorating a bit, then I um, am available to them to help them to get back on track with their handwriting. So that's one of the jobs I do. As I mentioned, um, one of the other things I'm uh, involved with is teaching protocol and etiquette. I go to a lot of universities. Uh, businesses, corporations will hire me in to train their staff. So I do things like that. I love to bake and cook. Um, every once in a while on my Instagram, you will see uh, I've baked a lot of uh, bread, you know, six loaves of bread, or I've made pies or cookies or whatever, and I love to do that. So. All right, calligraphy, my travels, so to speak, began um, probably about 30 years ago when I purchased a calligraphy set. Uh, it was three broad edge nib set and uh, the Schaefer Pen Company um, had manufactured that. And I didn't know much about it at all. There was a little booklet inside the pen set that gave some instructions. And that's what I followed along with, just learning on my own. And I developed at least a good hand. And, um, you know, different groups would ask me to write names on birth certificates or baptismal certificates and things like that. So I didn't really do much. I dabbled around with that. And it was probably in 2008 that I discovered pointed pen. I didn't really know much about pointed pen at all. And from there, I really jumped into the um, Spencerian saga that what at the time was uh, taught by master penman Michael Saul. And master penman Harvest Christendom was already involved in that because she was going to take over that uh, project from uh, Mr. Saul. So I went to the Spencerian Saga, I think it was in 2009, and from there just began a journey learning Spencerian, and Harvest encouraged me then to continue my learning. She was offering classes online, so I took the Copperplate class, I took um, the Borders class. I've taken a lot of different classes with Harvest, and she's been a wonderful teacher and mentor. So that's been my journey. Um, the cursive handwriting that I teach a lot, Mr. Saul, Master Penman Michael Saul would be my mentor and he's really been a help to me. And he's the one that asked me to join him in starting the American Cursive Instructor Certification Program, which uh, he turned over to me in 2015. So we started that actually in 2000, let's see, 2000, was it? Yeah, about three years prior, so it was about 2013. So I have really enjoyed doing that. Um, those are some of the things, you know, that I do and how I got going on my journey. I've taken three master classes with ma uh, Master Scribe, Sheila Walters. So, you know, we're learning from everybody, coming to IAMPA as well really is helpful because you learn from different teachers and they have a slight different perspective on a certain hand and so it's it's a wonderful learning experience to come to an impact as well.
Okay, so cursive writing would just indicate that the letters are connected. There are varying types of uh, cursive handwriting. Uh, Getty Dubé, for instance, is an italic cursive system of handwriting. And it is considered cursive because there are those connecting strokes or connecting ligatures which join the letters together. So that is cursive. Same if it is a Spencerian based script, which most of the systems that are on out in the marketplace today are really based on the Spencerian method of handwriting. They are fine-tuned slightly, um, but they all come from Platt Spencer. And again, it's a running hand, meaning that we can keep the pen or pencil, the writing instrument, on the paper and connect the letters together, just continuing to keep the pen on the paper. For instance, copper plate, we're lifting that pen many times to make those strokes. A cursive hand would be, we're always moving, especially here in the US because we read from left to right. So we're always writing from left to right. And we should be able to just continue on writing a whole word and just maybe lift the pen and maybe you might have to dot an I or cross a T in that letter and then you keep moving on over to the right side of the page. So that basically is cursive handwriting and I would also indicate it is a monoline, meaning we do not have any variation in the weight or thickness or shaded strokes. There are no shaded strokes, for instance. We do not need a writing instrument that applies pressure in order to separate the tines of a, of a nib and then we're able to get a heavier line. A cursive hand is done with pencil, uh, roller ball, um, ballpoint pen, maybe even a marker, fi very fine point marker because it's all one size of the stroke. It, it never varies, right? Mm -hmm. So that would be cursive handwriting. Okay, so what makes something American cursive versus just cursive? Mr. Saul has called his handwriting system the American cursive handwriting curriculum. And so he is heavily associated with that term, American cursive. But if you were to ask him where he derived his system of penmanship, he would tell you from Platte de Spencer and A.N. Palmer. He's morphed the two together, and we would know these systems as the business name. And so um, this is where American cursive comes from. The British was uh, and maybe European was more closely related to the Italic cursive, which of course does not have any ascender loops and descender loops. The American cursive does, and it's all based on the underlying shape of an oval. So I think that's probably the best way I can describe that for you. Handwriting certainly has diminished over the last, what, 25, 30 years, maybe even a bit longer, really when you get right down to it. Um, it was, uh, the Palmer method was taught in the schools until the mid 1950s. And then um, there were other systems that came in. I mean, Zeyner Bloser is still around today, publishing handwriting books that are used in schools. And you know what? When I go out there and I look, and I know students that take my ACICP training, that American Cursive Instructor Certification Program, I show them at least five or six other systems. That's only a few compared to <clears throat> quite a number of handwriting systems that are still out there today. So I say to myself, if it's dying, these publishers will be out of business. There are some schools that still will teach. Also people who homeschool want their children to learn cursive handwriting. 
we, uh, or I run into people who say, they may be grandparents, and they say, my grandchildren do not know how to read my letters. And if we look back at some of the historical documents that we have here in the United States, if you can't write cursive, it's highly likely that you cannot read it either. Well, I remember a time in history called what? The medieval days or the dark ages when people couldn't read books and they were totally reliant on government people, on people who were educated on the uh, religious leaders of the day who could read books to them or read something from the pages of a book. Nowadays, we are so bright and knowledge is everywhere. Isn't it a shame that we would find a historical document and not be able to read it? So I am a huge advocate and I, uh, of, of learning to write in cursive because I don't want a third party ever having to tell me what a document says and I don't think we should want that for our children either. So I would say the interest is diminished. It may be put on the back burner, but I will also add that there is a growing interest now. Whenever you take something away, now there's a growing interest in, huh, I never had a chance to learn that. And so we've got young people now who were denied access to learning cursive writing in school, even elementary and all the way up through the high school years and college. All they know how to do is block print. I mean, use capital letters. They have no individual or unique signature. And so now we see a lot of young people saying, I want to learn cursive because I was not taught that in school. There's also another growing body of evidence that supports the fact that when you teach a child or even an adult how to write letters with a writing instrument, it opens learning centers in the brain. They are clearly seeing that it helps memorization. It helps you to retain information if you will write it down. Um, it also helps with your reading skills. It helps with your creative writing skills. And for some students, um, they have also seen that it helps them with their mathematics. Uh, I'm not quite sure how the brain works all of that together because it's a, a wonderfully creative thing, right? But there's also um, statistics that will show that when students take the SAT tests uh, here, the, it's the um, educational system, has them take these academic achievement tests. The ones who are able to write in cursive score high. And nobody's really been able to pinpoint why that is, but it is a fact. And they've seen evidence of that. So it may be still on the back burner, but I think the flame is getting a bit higher. And I think that um, if we say it's dying, we have to ask, why would we let it die? It is a skill that can be done by anybody with a little training, a little help, um, you know, some instruction on the shapes of the letters and how to put them all together. And why wouldn't anyone want to be able to write in their own hand? What happens if the power goes off or the batteries die? We're going to be stuck. And I, I, was, I was jokingly saying to the students I teach, Oh my goodness, have you ever seen a bank robber come in and push his phone under the <laughs> phone under the teller's window saying, I want all your money? Usually they write a note, right? And uh, what if he needed to write SOS or help? Yeah, you know, I, I know that I'm sort of tongue in cheek and, and I'm saying that facetiously, but we should learn how to write our own language in our own hand and be able to communicate with people in a written form. As you mentioned earlier, just how meaningful it is to you to receive a handwritten letter. It is one of those things that can completely brighten our day. And, it, and, and if we didn't quite understand it all the first time and think, wow, somebody wrote that to me, 
you can read it again and get that same lift, that same uh, happiness and joy, you know, that comes to you. All right, so we, we can't get away from the fact that we're really connected to our laptops, our tablets, and our phone, cell phones. And so we're going to be doing a lot of keyboarding. And the pen, however, to me is a, a writing instrument where we can truly convey our feelings. When we write on a laptop or any type of word processing um, system, we can never get um, anything with a, a, an emotional value to it. When we write, our cursive handwriting, even though we might have 20 students in a class who are all learning American cursive handwriting or even Getty DeBay system of handwriting, they all have that target to work for and strive toward but each person has their own little movement of their hand. Their emotions will come into play. Sometimes if we're angry or troubled, we can write with a heavier hand and, and we might be really pressing hard with that pencil that day. And there are other times when we're more relaxed. Um, we can utilize that cursive writing. I am a huge advocate of journaling because journaling at the end of the day helps you to relax yourself, helps you to put your thoughts down on paper. You can, you can complain to yourself if you want to and get things off your chest without causing arguments with other people. Um, there are times when you just need to send a quick note to somebody. And I, if you have a spouse or if you have children, it's lovely to drop a little note in a lunch bag. Um, I have a, a way of putting a little note in my husband's pockets or in, in his shirts, you know, after they come out of the laundry. And um, as, on a given day, he may put on that shirt with the note inside and his, his face is brightened because I wrote a note. Nobody wants to get a birthday card off that's just typewritten. Nobody wants to get a love letter that's done on a word processor. We live in a click and delete society, and it's very easy to just totally erase those into the never, never land of electronic communication, right? And something that is handwritten speaks very dearly and closely to your heart that the person has taken time to get a pen, get a paper, to sit and write to you personally. And very often, we never want to throw that away. We want to keep that. We want to be able to reread that note or that letter. I mean, I use it a lot, just writing down notes to myself because I like to keep a, what are the things I need to do, first things I need to do tomorrow, I'll write the night before, or I might need to write a shopping list, or I might need to write a quick memo to somebody. I work in a school, you know, teaching, and so I might need to write a little note to the teacher if I'm gonna be absent. I leave work for the students and say, I'll, if we'll see you in class on such and such a date, and they know that they can turn in these uh, exemplars to the students. So we, we use it more than we think we do. And in school children, for instance, um, especially the younger grades, will use uh, cursive handwriting or handwriting of any sort for about 80% of their schoolwork. As they get into high school, they use it for about 50%. So, People need to know how to write with their own hand and develop their own signature. It's, it's uh, a rite of passage. It's something that we should learn to do. So there are resources out in the marketplace, you know, that will give you instruction and information on handwriting and how to improve your handwriting. And I know there are people such as myself who do online classes, right? Teaching cursive handwriting. But if someone says, oh, I don't know if I want to invest in the money and maybe they don't have the resources to invest and they want to uh, do it themselves and learn to improve, Number one, they should at least, if they can, um, even the um, Spencerian system of writing, I don't think it's awfully expensive for Platt Roger Spencer's um, set of little books 
that uh, have worksheets in them uh, on Spencerian writing. And you don't have to do all the fancy capital letters. It learn those lowercase letters because they're all the same pretty much in every system. It's just the capital letters that change a bit, right? Or maybe the height of the loops or the length of the loops. In different systems, they do vary slightly. But overall, as we write, we tend to shorten our ascender and descender loops anyway, and especially when we're building speed into our handwriting. So people just need to know the shapes of the letters. And I would say, oh, practice, practice, practice. Practice even making loops, upper loops, lower loops. Practice uh, making straight lines up, straight lines down. You know, we can do one, two, three, a long line, you know, one, two, three, and then do them upwards, one, two, three. We can practice ovals. We can practice those long, almost like a figure eight, lying on its side, just to get our arm and our fingers moving together and develop smoothness and that consistency. So they can, uh, people can just do that, even doodling on a paper helps you to learn control over your writing instrument. And that's where people might find difficulty because they haven't written since last week or last month. Um, they've been on their typewriter. It, they're a bit rusty. So they need to just warm up a bit and get right back into it. Same way if you were an ice skater and oh my goodness, you maybe had an injury and you had to stop for a week or two. My goodness, you don't go out and do a triple axel. You know, the first time out, you warm up. You start skating and you warm up. Same with football players, they warm up before they go out for a game and get going. But you have to know the basic principles and how the letters are formed. And then I would say, as I said, practice and then start doing it a bit more often. Buy a journal, and even if you don't want to write a whole page per day, write down two things you're thankful for every day. That also helps to build gratitude. Oh, sorry, I didn't <laughs> touch my microphone. That also helps to build gratitude in your heart as well, and gives you more appreciation for what you have in life. And um, so I, I would say just even do things like that. Make it a point to write down your shopping list, your grocery list, and. Just use those things. Write someone a little note of appreciation and just thinking of you. There's beautiful, beautiful stationery out there. And I think people that don't write, they miss out on, on even going to stationery stores. And they're becoming fewer and far between, but you can find it online. And there's nothing nicer to me than a beautiful fountain pen. And I love fountain pens. One of the only benefits with a fountain pen is you can change the color of inks. So you might love to write with a blue one week and you might change to a sepia brown the next one. You might change to a dark olive green. I love changing inks and actually, to be perfectly honest, <laughs> I have multiple fountain pens and I will use one you know, for blue ink, one for black ink. I have um, a, a lovely green fountain pen. I keep green ink in that one. So they're lovely instruments to write with, and even if you find a nice rollerball, uh, they're, they're nice writing instruments as well. So I think if a person has that interest, and they do, it, you know, it, it, we can't really force people to do this. <laughs> they have to have that desire inside, oh, I want, I want to learn cursive, or I want to improve my cursive. And if they have that desire, there are certainly um, opportunities for them to do so by looking into uh, practice books, workbooks that are out there. Michael Saul has a self-study, is the American cursive uh, handwriting curriculum. My goodness, there are so many worksheets in that um, that someone could work uh, on. There's the model world, what the letters should all look like, and you just write them out below. And there are others uh, in the marketplace too. If you prefer um, the italic, cursive or cursive italic, then the Getty Lube system would be another good choice.
Yes, because I do teach a, um, an eight hour, it's approximately eight hour, four two hour sessions, a course that is called Classic Cursive. And then if they do well in that and they'd love to teach cursive themselves, i um, mentioned this a couple of times now, is the ACICP, standing for American Cursive Instructor Certification Program. And in order to take that training, a person would have to have good handwriting. So they do need to maybe take my classic cursive uh, course first, or even if they've studied Spencerian and they do very well in Spencerian, that is the foundation of American cursive handwriting. So um, they would need to submit in order to be approved into that training. But if anyone wants to reach out to me, they can find me at um, you know, the triple W's dot crown calligraphy dot com. My email address is crown calligraphy co, C O, because I'm in Colorado. And, um, and that it would be at gmail dot com. So those are two ways they can reach me. And then on Instagram, I am crown.calligraphy. So there are multiple ways that you can reach out to me. I am a person who will always respond. If I get your email or your message, I will always respond. And to anybody, especially people that have an interest in cursive, either they want more information about it or want to know what they can do with it, I will respond. I get questions from people quite a bit who ask me different things about, I, I've been practicing my cursive and I want to know how do you space out the lines so that the um, ascenders and descender loops don't bump into one another and how do you do this but you want to keep it within a certain size sheet of paper. So I answer questions as simple as that, uh, you know, for people. And then students will ask me, how can I put all this material into different lesson plans? And I help my students with that as well too. So you want to contact me, I will listen to your question and I will answer your question. <laughs> okay, well, because I am a teacher, not only of cursive handwriting, I am also cross-trained in pointed pen and broad edge pen. So they both really spark my interest. And so when I see work that's been done with both pens, pointed and broad edge pen, and it's all done extremely well, so that I can see that this person has a mastery of both pens, then that, for me at least, it piques my interest. And I find that hmm, that's very appealing. And the contrast, that is done between pointed pen and broad edge pen is also uh, very beautiful. So for me, I'm going to choose this one right here by Maya, I believe it says Maya Maha script uh, over it. And again, because I like the broad edge pen and the pointed pen, the color of your ink, if you're all watching, is lovely as well. It, it, it almost looks like a deep burgundy from where I'm looking. So this would be my choice. <laughs> Very hard to choose because so many of them were absolutely.